Hey everyone, Educator Adam here again with another Expedition OSCP. This week's adventure takes us on the Alligator Loop or the Red Trail. It starts off at this kiosk sign right behind the Interpretive Center and this is a great place. There's maps over there and there's bird lists right here where you can keep a track of the birds you see on your adventure. We also on this trail offer dog sanitation bags so that way when you're walking your pet you can clean up after them. Well follow me as we explore the red trail or the alligator loop. So the alligator loop is a great trail to explore. Just remember if the boardwalk is wet it can be slippery so just take your time and enjoy your adventure. Now if you're bringing a stroller or a wheelchair, it's best to enter on the Osprey Loop next to the Stony Landing House and then access the Alligator Loop via that instead of coming down the stairs you see behind me. So on the trails, you may actually encounter venomous snakes. Now they're not going to harm you if you leave them alone. Just keep your distance and stay away if one happens to be on the trail in front of you, just back away slowly. All right. Now this happens to be a cotton mouth or water moccasin. So pretty interesting find. It is one of the six venomous snakes of South Carolina. So the most common wetland you're gonna find in the low country is called a cypress and tupelo swamp. So we talked about cypress in an earlier video about how it has buttress trunks and it has knees, right? Well, the other one is this tupelo right here. The tupelo trees, you can identify it because they also have buttress trunks, but they don't have the big indents that cypress trees do. They're really smooth all the way down to the base of their roots. So another common wetland plant is this plant right here called lizard's tail and it gets its name lizard's tail because it has a six to eight inch flower which is white but eventually will start to brown and turn into what looks like a lizard's tail it's easily identifiable by its heart-shaped leaves and its six to eight inch flowers on the alligator trail you're going to run across patches of ferns just like this these ferns are called Southern Shield Ferns. They get their name because they grow all throughout the Southeast on damp soils and they have that triangular shield shape. So as you explore the alligator loop, you're going to run across brush piles just like the one behind me. These are actually left there on purpose. They provide excellent habitat for rabbits and insects which provide lots of food for our state bird, the Carolina Wren. So if you happen to have your own canoe or kayak, you can actually launch it right into Biggin's Swamp on the alligator trail. We have a boat launch especially for you. So if you don't want to rent kayaks and canoes, but you still want to explore Biggin Creek, you can bring your own and launch it right on the alligator loop. On the alligator loop, you're actually gonna run across a old lime kiln, like you'll see behind me. And what it was, was they took limestone and they heated it up for multiple days over corn, coal until it turned into lime that they could use for agricultural purposes. The company was called Colleton Lime Works. Another really cool place on the alligator loop is our amphitheater. Our amphitheater is a great place to eat your lunch underneath a majestic live oak behind me and it's a great place to just relax and listen to the wildlife, frogs and birds that inhabit this swamp. Another really cool feature on the alligator trail is this limestone wall you can see behind me. Remember limestone is actually formed from the ocean. So when ocean critters such as oysters and clams and bones, they fall to the ocean floor, over time they are pressed together on, with lots and lots of pressure to form limestone. And it's really rich in calcium. So lots and lots of plants really like 
the calcium rich soils we have here at the park. The alligator trail gets its name because it's a great place to spot alligators. So just keep a sharp eye because they are well camouflaged. As you're walking along the alligator loop, make sure you keep your eyes out as you're coming upon the big bridge because you never know what you're gonna see. This is a great place to see wading birds such as great blue herons, great egrets, snowy egrets, and even a tricolored heron if you're lucky. So as you cross over the big bridge on the alligator trail, you're going to come across the, a dead log. This log is a great place to see reptiles sunning themselves, such as this alligator here, or lots and lots of yellow-bellied sliders. As you're walking down the alligator loop, make sure you keep a close eye out for amphibians. This is a great trail to see amphibians and to hear amphibians because of its access to the swamp. So keep a close eye out for amphibians like this guy, which is called a bronze frog because of its brown tan color. On the alligator loop, there's three observation points. These are great places to look for alligators, wading birds, and hingas, dragonflies, and all sorts of wildlife. You never know what you're going to see. Don't just look above the water, but look below the water as well. You can actually see some, some fish. These fish are red-eared sunfish. You can tell because they, if you look on the gills, they actually have a little red spot. Pretty cool. At the end of the alligator loop, you'll actually meet up with the osprey loop. And that gives you an option to go back to the Stony Landing House or back to the Interpretive Center. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's adventure of the alligator loop. That concludes today's episode of another Expedition OSCP. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I hope to see you next week. Bye.